Good morning, YouTube. We are on the third day. Yay, we made it. But anyway, please do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe. Today, we're going to be talking about a brief overview of the certification exam. So, understand that every time I come on, I'm going to be providing you with information to assist you with passing your exam. Okay? So, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in, everybody, come on in get to know me. Like I told you, legal document professional, I am the owner and I am here to share, give, and learn, and teach. We're going to do this together as I stated and let's jump right in. We're going to be talking about a brief overview of the certification exam. I'm going to go this way this time and I'm going to read it. Notary signing agent certification exam requires you to do demonstrate your knowledge of sound market signing practices as well as your solid understanding of the notary signing agent code of conduct and signing presentation guidelines. So we know that the code of conduct is important as well as the signing guidelines. If you stay within that, you will do well. Okay, here are some of the facts you need to know about the certification exam. Okay, so the first thing is there is online accessibility. The exam is taken fully online via the secure website provided. Now, let me tell you something. That portal is extremely easy to use. It's user friendly. And um, once you get on, I mean, you hit start and hit you agree. You go from there. 45 questions after that. And all you need to pass is 36. Now, if you can pass all 45, that'll be great. You can do that, and I know you can. I believe in you, and hey, everything is in the book. All right. Right, so there's 45 questions. It consists of a total of 45 rotating questions, which is a mixture of both multiple choice and true or false format. As previously mentioned, a score of at least 80% is required for you to pass. We talked about that in the last video. All right, so it's an open book test. So it's a pass, pass test. Anything that's open book is definitely pass, pass. Okay, while, while the questions themselves are challenging, the test is not timed and it is full open book format. So you are free to access any resources, including this loan signing study guide when taking it. So it's impossible to fail the exam. It's an open book test. Got Google right there. I mean, you, it's impossible to pass. Just understand that if you Google anything, sometimes those answers are wrong because it's just people's opinions. I say stick to the study guide because all of the answers are in the book. It's, it's a pass pass. Even if you don't want to read the whole book, you can kind of like just browse through the book a little bit answer some go back you could however you want to do it whatever makes you feel comfortable you know as long as you're keeping it in the book you will pass that's why i said guaranteed pass okay all right so annual renewal we talked about that remember i said wait a minute they said annual renewal why what are we talking about is it the background check or is it the actual loan signing so let's get into it to meet their services that to meet the services and compliance requirements, lenders and title companies generally require loan signing agents to renew their qualification on an annual basis. This means you will need to take and pass the certification exam as well as your background screening annually. So there you go. So that means that as a loan signing agent, you will need to pass the exam annually. That's the answer, okay? There's no guessing about it. Now, to do your notary certification, it doesn't expire for four years, but the loan signing actually expires, meaning you have to retake the exam annually. So whatever that fee was that you paid in the first place to do it, do it annually, meaning also you also have to do the background check annually because each time you re-establish this, you have to also reestablish your um, 
background check and certification. So that is good to know. So basically, we're going to do a quick little overview of what we went through on yesterday and um, today. We're just going to kind of just go through it really quickly. Quickly. So let's talk about the notary signing generally have five primary responsibilities, right? So the five primary responsibility is to coordinate and oversee the appointment at which loan documents that are being signed by the signer, okay? To receive or reproduce documents for signing appointment and to deliver the documents to the appointment. To ensure that real estate loan documents are properly executed. To ensure that the documents requiring notarized are properly notarized. To return the documents for processing. Now, we talked about the five requirements, and we're just going to breeze through them really quickly. And the signing and adhering to a notary signing agent code of conduct, passing the annual certification, submitting to an annual background check, using signing presentation guidelines, owning notary errors and omission insurance. All right. Now, in, in regards to the background screening, 10-year search of criminal record, social security number trace, county criminal court search, motor vehicle, national sex offenders database, national criminal database, federal uh, district court search, and U.S. Patriot Act, including terrorist watch list. All right, we're going to keep it moving. We're going into chapter two, and I'm only going to share so much with you on this video because we do not want to, you know, go too far over. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started as a certified notary signing agent, okay? In this lesson, we will take a deeper look into specific guidelines and the best practices when it comes to performing your rules, your role as a loan signing agent, Excuse me. We will focus on how to present your business, including laws, regulation, fees, and advertising, how to market your services, how to conduct assigning, and how to follow up once you have completed the assignment. The information in this lesson will be pulled directly from two key documents, the Notary Signing Agent Code of Conduct and the Associate Signing Presentation Guidelines. This will be helpful for two reasons. First, the vast majority of the questions appearing in the NSA certification exam come from these two documents. And second, these are the guiding principles you will want to follow when conducting an actual signing. So this is important, which is why I'm sharing it with you. You don't feel like reading? I read it for you. All right. The Code of Conduct. The Code of Conduct is divided into nine distinct areas, each area represented by a key guideline principle. The document is designed to guide and to educate both notary signing agent and the companies that hire them on the standards of professionalism. It is also offered Specific guidelines on daily administrative tasks such as advertising one services, the charging and collecting of fees, and how to demonstrate responsibility conduct with contracting companies and signers. Much of the content will be covered in this lesson. The signing presentation guidelines. You're going to hear me say that a lot, and I'm going to go over that a lot because those guidelines is going to help you pass your exam with minimum studying. But I would say study, study, study because you're going to need to know this information annually in order to grow your business. Okay? Don't steer away from it. Run straight into it. Head forward. Okay? So that you can hit the ground running. The document provides specific guidelines. I'm sorry. The document provides specific guidance and suggestions as to the language you might use when performing an assignment. Throughout this lesson, you will provide content from the Code of Conduct Guidelines. 
as pertain to the corresponding steps of the NSA process. Again, both the Code of Conduct and the Signing Presentation Guidelines are offered in their entirety in Lesson 3 of this book. All right. In this lesson, we will cover the following topics. Standard of Practice and NSA Professionalism. Landing the assignment, which is very important because that's your money. Preparing the assignment, conducting the assignment, a meeting with the signer, preparing the signing space, presentation of the documents, handling issues during the appointment, closing the meeting, post-assignment follow-up. Now, please understand that I'm reading without my glasses again today, and that's fine. Just as long as I can get the information to you, that's all that matters. Just pay very close attention and take notes, and you can always rewind. All right, part one, standards of practice and NSA professionalism. In this section, we will focus on your qualifications, how you market your services, confirming and collecting your fees, and maintaining standards of practice throughout each step of the loan signing. Meeting the NSA requirements. When it comes to NSA qualifications, you will find that the requirements for a notary commission varies from state to state. Other qualifications are set by each contracting company, but many have similar requirements. The NNA NSA certification program reflects commonly standard and is widely accepted throughout the real estate finance industry. It is ultimately your responsibility to meet all the requirements of your jurisdiction. Guiding principles one of the code of conduct covers qualification in great detail. But here are some of the key guidelines. Professional licenses. NSA must obtain and maintain all licenses and commission required to perform signing services in the state or jurisdiction. This means you'll need to keep your notary commission and license required by your state to handle loan signings, such as a title producer license or a license to practice law currently. We're talking about an attorney if there's a license to practice law, um, title producer license, something title company okay your background background screening background screening okay background screening as previously discussed in and mm, I'm always getting tongue tied I'm always getting tongue tied let me slow down okay background screening previously discussed as an NSA you are required to have background screening of your identity, residence, record of the state and federal criminal arrest convictions, state motor vehicle records, and a check of your name against pertinent list as required by rules implementing um, the U.S. Patriot Act. Many lenders and title companies require that this screening be on your annual basis every year because within a year anything can happen. But every year they require it. And if you want to build your business, you want to stay in compliance. Passing the background screening on an annual basis qualifies you to work for the greatest number of contracting company. Notarial and federal laws and regulations to ensure compliance in your responsibility um, to ensure compliance. It is your responsibility it is your responsibility to keep current on all the laws and regulations that affect the performances of notarial acts in your state or jurisdiction, especially as they pertain to the performance of signing services. This includes, but not limited to, GLBA, which is Graham Leach ba mm. Bailey. Okay. All right, Truth and Lending, which is TILA, Real Estate Settlement Procedure Act, which is RESPA, R-E-S-P-A, 
Fair and Accurate Credit and Transaction Act, which is F-A-C-T-A, um, uniting the Strengthening American Performing Appropriate Tool Required to Intercept and Obstruct Terrorism. That's the U.S. Patriot Act. Now, that's the reason why they... Um, they just give you the letters because it's really hard to pronounce some of these words. Okay, so it's the GLBA, it's the TILA, it's the RESPA, it's the FACTA, it's the U.S. Patriot Act. Google it. <laughs> we are providing free information and all this information is available on Google. Some of these words I cannot pronounce, okay? Keeping it real. All right, so take the time to access resources online to maintain a high level of understanding of the law that impact your work. And that's important. As long as you understand what it is that you are doing, understand what it is that you are reading. Here's how you say it. Just get that understanding so that you can perform the job because it's really not hard at all. It's very easy. All right. You must earn and maintain any certification needed to to service contracting companies and parties to the transaction. That's going to be the exam because in my mind, if it's four years as a notary and it doesn't expire for four years, in my mind, I thought that that included the loan signing. It did not. <laughs> okay. Which means I never went back and got my, um, annual within four years. Like, so for the whole four years, while I'm still working and doing what I needed to do, I didn't know that part. You know why? Because I didn't read the book. I just took the exam. I'm a good test taker and I passed it. And then, you know, started working from there, building my business and, and grinding from there. Now I am going to do it the right way because now I know. So there are mistakes that you make along the way, but you learn as you go. And it's important that once you build your confidence enough to get out there and do what you need to do for you, because it's your money. All right. You're building your bank account. Right. And it's important to know it. You know, you can't just breeze through it and be like, hey, no, it's your business. So you have to really build it. God has been really good to me, even though. There were certain things that I didn't know. I still was able to do what I needed to do to build my business. And, and that's important. Okay. So um, closing documents. It is important to get familiar yourself. Get familiar with the closing documents. That's going to be on the test. And this is going to tell you why. As a notary, you must be careful to never provide unauthorized information or advise the signers which could be construed as unauthorized practice of the law. Don't want to do that at all. This means what you are asked when you are asked a question that is inappropriate, such as, is my interest rate a good one? Let the signer know that you are not allowed by law to discuss this level in detail in the signing, but that they can contact the signing company. Continued education. This is important. This is why I say it's important to know. Okay. That way, you know that you're supposed to have an annual background check. You know, as a loan signing agent, you have to retake the four to five questions annually. It's just four to five questions. So, hey, stay informed on the technical matters, legal requirements, and other developments that may affect your competence our responsibility in rendering signing services. The NSA annual compliance is updated to keep the NSA current with new documents and regulations. Completing this course is noted on signingagent.com. This let contracting companies know your knowledge is up to date. So signing companies will check, okay? They will check. Supervising attorney. I work at a law firm, so I have plenty of supervision under the attorneys that I currently work for. See, God is good. He set me up. You know, I am a certified paralegal that is approved by the American Bar Association. It feels good. Yes, yes. So I wanted to do this. Plus, I work on the attorney. So I'm it, it's it's wonderful. Now, when I'm out doing my signings and I'm by myself, of course, that does not um 
you know, I'm not under supervision of an attorney at that point. I don't need it at that point because I am registered with the state of California to assist the public too. So either way, it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you are where you should be for your business. Whatever it takes, get your license, get your business license, do whatever you need to do because you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Okay. If required by law or rule in your state or jurisdiction, you must submit to the attorney that is supervising you. This is simple in any regulated field, okay? And I'm going to explain why, okay? Um, it is important that you are under attorney just in case legal advice, that question of that comes up, you will be able to have it. So one thing about it is say a signer, you're going to a signer and a signer says, well, the title company tells you that the signer is going to have their attorney present. That doesn't mean that you do not do the signing. You still go, even if the attorney is there. So anytime you see a question on there that has something to do with an attorney, that doesn't stop you from doing your job. Do your job. Anytime you come to a question that says something that's reluctant about you moving forward, keep moving forward as long as it's not illegal. Keep moving forward as long as it does not affect the signing. Keep moving forward as long as it's in the code of conduct and you know that it's within the scope of the guidelines. Just keep moving forward. Uh, do what you're there to do, basically. All right, let's talk about advertising. All right, that's going to be on the test as well. So advertising your notary signing services. As a notary signing agent, it is likely that you want to market or advertise your services. However, there are several important regulations regarding how notaries are permitted to do so for this reason. Guiding principle eight of the code focuses entirely on the law and regulations regarding how notary signing agents may advertise their services. The bottom line is, when advertising or marketing your services for a small business, you must never advertise in an unprofessional, false, misleading, or deception way. Below, it is detailed breakdown of advertising rules and how they apply to notary signing agents. All right, truth, personal assessment. Never misrepresent your background, your education, your training, your expertise in an application or interview or post inaccurate claims on your company website or other professional material you distributed. This includes marketing, exaggeration or excess claims, promotions are guaranteed about the services you provide. It may be tempting to build up your resume when you are a beginner. I promise you don't want to do that because it will come back and bite you in the... You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you're being honest, okay? Make sure that in your business that you are being honest, because you don't never want to run into something and then it comes back. It'll be embarrassing. So you want to be honest. If you have your certifications, if you have your all of this, if you have your website, post it there. You can post your degree. You can post your certifications. You can post that stuff there as your website. You can provide that information to prove that you are who you say you are. Because there are a lot of people that are running around saying that they do this and they do that just because they want to make some money and they don't have the educational backing at all. Because anybody can open up an LDA um, legal document business services and say that they have this and that and the other and they don't. And they're just winging it because Google has everything. They're winging it, you know, and that's not good. You want to be honest with your customers because in the event that anything happens and you end up being sued, you're not going to win that. So you want to make sure that you're being honest on your website and being honest with your customers. You know, you're going to build your business and you want to build it on trust. So that's why this is important, right? It may be tempting to build up your resume when you are a beginner. Promise. A faster turnaround of documents. Some people say, oh, I can do this in 20 minutes. You cannot. It's going to take you at least 45 minutes to an hour and sometimes more than that to do a signing. Okay. All right. Your claim 
of specialization in a unique area untruthfully, it's not good. Take the time to build a resume and you will grow important, faithful relationship along the way. You got to be trustworthy. That's the bottom line. You got to be trustworthy. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself what you can do. You know, you don't have to lie about it. Just be honest. Hey, I'm new at this. Just getting started. Everybody started at some point. And you just say that, you know, and you just move forward from there. You know, now this is going to be my second year as a loan signing agent. So that gives me eight years experience. You know what I mean? So that's just as a loan signing agent, but as a paralegal, being certified, um, I got certified paralegal in 2019, but I had already been doing legal work prior to that and working in law offices. So I was already a legal assistant, you know, and worked for a company where I was uh, basically doing collections and I was an authorized representative. So I got experience speaking in front of the judge, you know, so that all of the experience count. You know, if you can get it in, get it in, get your experience. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So anyway, so that's where the truthful personal assessment, assess it and say, wait a minute, I want to say this. I want to say that, but make sure that it's the truth. Use professional and improper designation. Okay. You cannot advertise or promote any services or make false, misleading, non-existing or meaningless designations by using professional designation or certifications you do not have or have received or earned. It is important. A competitive advantage can be gained by building a strong, reputable business. Okay. Observations of rules. Okay. You must always comply with the regulations the requirements governed, the use of membership and professional designation logos and marks may be required by an organization that used our certified designation logos or marks. What this means is that you may not suggest to a signer or a contracting company that you are either an employee or a certified NSA if you are not. You cannot do that. And therefore, many may place a logo on a business card or a nameplate. <laughs> it's funny. Have you ever ran into anyone to give you a business card telling you that they are a loan signing agent, but they misrepresent it? Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. Okay. What if, just a little scenario, you go... And you do a signing for someone, right? You do everything right. You've checked everybody's IDs and everything is right. Everybody signed. And then they're getting ready to have a divorce, right? And then all of a sudden it's in court, right? And then they pull in the loan signing agent. And then it is revealed that, in fact, you were not a loan signing agent. Now, that's something you want to ask a lawyer, Will those documents be accurate? Will those documents be recalled? Will those documents be voided due to the fact that you were not a loan signing agent at that time? But that would be the most embarrassing thing to get pulled into court and come to find out that isn't it a fact that you were not a loan signing agent at the time of this signing? Uh, not good. Anyway, soliciting of outside business. When providing signing or notary services on behalf of your signing services, you shouldn't directly or indirectly solicit a signer for products or services other than the services you have been hired to perform. Basically, what this means is once you uh, are assigned and you're going to a signer's place, once you're there, you can't, you know, start telling them about your I'm a paralegal. Hey, you know, if you need a divorce, or, hey, you need, you need, you can't do none of that while you're there. You just go there and do what you're there to do. And that's to sign up the loan documents. That's it. You don't need to tell them anything else about you. This is what they're saying under the rules and regulations. You don't need to do that with the signer that you're sitting with at that moment. I am here. I have these documents. 
We're going to sign these. We're going to go through them. This is going to take 45 minutes to an hour. Could take a little bit longer depending on the packet, but we're going to do as best we can to go through this. If you have any legal questions, please address that to your attorney. If you have any questions in regards to your loan documents that I cannot answer, please address that to the signing companies. I am unable to email these documents to you. You can sell that stuff up front nicely, but I can guide you through this and I can, you know, give you a description of what's on here and I can point you where you can read to get the information. If you have additional questions, signing company. Simple as that. People understand when you explain things, okay? All right. So when you're performing a signing or notary service on behalf of a signing service, you shouldn't directly or indirectly solicit the signer for products or services other than the services you are there to perform. Many NSA have additional lines of business, such as tax preparation, equipment, witnesses, um, mis mis mystery shoppers. When representing a contracting company at a signing appointment, maintain focus on what you're there to do. All right, so we're going to stop there and we will pick this up on confirming and collecting fees next time. All right. So I just want to talk and chat with you guys for a little bit. And I also want to give you the second question on Saturday. We'll be answering that first question. Um, we'll be answering that on May 11th. I will be doing a live and I'm hoping that a lot of you notaries, uh, come so that we could, um, Stay up to date together. All right. So this is going to be the question for this week. It is called, not this week, for today, because today is actually the third day. So we'll be doing multiple questions a week because um, every other day maybe. Okay. This question is, the best way to address a borrower's question, a signer question, um, that the notary signing agent is not allowed to answer is to make a list of questions, right? No. All right. The best way, that's just what I'm thinking, but no. The best way to address a signer's question at a notary signing is to not, um, I don't want to give the answer now. <laughs> I want to give the answer over the weekend. I just want to give you the question. Okay, so, okay. The best way to address a signer's question that the notary signing agent is not allowed to answer. That's it. And then we'll talk about the answer. Okay. We're going to try to find out if every year the questions change. Will the questions be the same? Things of that nature. Um. I've already hit on some other uh, things, such as um, the pre-signing confirmation of interest. Um, and that's about it. So, you guys, like, comment, and subscribe. And, hey, we're reading from a book. And this is going to be considered um, genuine. And we're going to make some mistakes along the way. Who cares? As long as we get it done. All right. So, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to come along this journey of studying together join me by subscribing bye